So, as y'all can see, this week is jam-packed with earnings as we are right in the middle of Q3 earnings report week. And because we have so much earnings, guys, we really want to focus on these companies, specifically on the ones on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So, for that reason, you guys didn't see any video on Monday. However, today, as if I'm recording this, it is Monday. Today, I would like to finish up the wheel because this has been, um, nah, this has been one long time for me to actually cover this wheel so we're gonna take a look at the last company guys the company rubus which was brought up by none other than andrea boost now i don't know if you're still watching but if you are congratulations we're not doing your company so let's take a look at the company guys rubus and uh let's see what their fundamental says then let's do a discount free cash to see if the current share price this is looking like a buy so with that said let's get started with this analysis so here we have the company Rubis, and to my surprise, this was a utility company of all things, based in France. So yeah, talk about uh, talk about an interesting company here. Let's take a look at what they actually do in their company profile. Rubis engages in operations of bulk liquid storage facilities for commercial and industrial. Con customers in Europe, Africa, and the Caribbean. The company operates through retail and marketing, support and services, and renewable electricity production segment. It operates terminals that provides bulk liquid storage facilities for fuel, chemicals, and agricultural products, and distributes fuels, liquefied gases, butamine, I think that's how you say that, and lubricants. The company also provides infrastructure, transportation, supply, and services for supporting and developing the downstream distribution and marketing activities, and produces photovoltaic electricity so yeah this is an interesting one guys can't say utility company to gas utility company which is very very interesting and uh yeah france yeah boise eric however you say that in french uh so yeah guys this is already a very very interesting company now they don't have earnings at least seeking alpha doesn't have the earnings summary for it so with that said let's jump now straight into the fundamentals and of course because this is a utility company we have to use the banks and insurances evaluation because we have to use book value for this one we got the ticker for rbsfy market cap of 2.1 billion dollars with pe of na and a current share price of four dollars and 42 cents so right off the bat i am not liking the fact that this is na as well as the share price being under five dollars because well this is technically guys a penny stock taking a look at this graph this is uh wow very very choppy as you guys can see might just be a cause of the fact that this is a french company and uh you guys can see on the one year this is down 9.62 percent year to date 24.77 percent 52 week range of 404 to 605 so this is at all time lows right now guys at least when it comes to the 52 week range in fact even today well it, we hit the lowest here it did close at the lowest it went down eight and a half percent just today so not really interesting to see now i am curious on the max the highest was $16.80, and it stayed at that. Yeah, this is why I don't like foreign companies. L look at this. From November 20th, 2017 to essentially July 9th, 2018, it stayed at $16.80. I don't understand why this occurred. And coming back over here, we can see that they do pay out a dividend of $0.42, cents, which is a massive yield of 9.5%, no payout ratio, Five-year growth rate of 3.61 with one consecutive year of dividend payment. Ex-dividend date passed as of June 9th. Payout date was on June 30th. And they pay their dividends annually. So you won't get this up until next year. Now, I'm very, very curious about that history because with that 9% yield, it's absolutely massive. So if we take a look at this, we can see that, let's see, five years ago, it was 35 cents. Then went up to 36. Then they did... What? Whoa, that's a weird one right there. So they paid out twice right there for some reason. And that, I don't know if that's the case. Maybe it was a special one. And they paid out again at 43 cents. And they went down to 39 cents. And then they came back up to 23. So that's why they only had one year. Because they did bring it down from 43 in 2021 to 39 in 2022. And of course, based off the current shares outstanding, they pay out $43.3 million. Taking a look at the net income, we got five years ago of $291 million to today of $288 million. That's a decrease of 1.13%. So you can see here from 
essentially four years ago to today, they have just been pretty consistently decreasing. However, from one year ago to today, they did increase it. So I'm going to give this guy a 65%. The revenue is looking pretty good. Five years ago of $5 billion to today of $7.8 billion, increase of 55%. Very consistently increasing, even if you take out the three and the two year goals, which essentially it was COVID. So I'm not really going to blame them for that. If you take these two out, you can see a very, very consistent straight line. I'm going to say guys 95%. Shares of standing could be a little bit better. However, in the past five years, you can see that they went from 96.8 million shares to today of 103.1 million. This is an issuing of shares of a little bit more than six and a half percent. And from the previous year to the current year, it is an increase of a fifth of a percent. You can see that three years ago is when they issued a ton from four to three. And then ever since they brought it back down from three to two, but they've increased it once again to 103.1. So that's why I'm going to give this a 75%. Assets minus liabilities looks very, very similar to that of the net income. Average total assets, it is $6.25 billion. Average liabilities is $3.3 billion. Doing this difference, we get $3 billion. Overall grade, guys, of 65%. If we take a look at this overall grade, we can see that the net income is 65, revenue 95, shares of standing 75, and assets minus liabilities is 65, overall grade of 77%. Honestly, it's very, very interesting because I was expecting a lot worse. I really, really was. The revenue is honestly really good. And the net income and the assets minus liabilities, it's not that they're bad. It's just I would have preferred a little bit more consistency, you know, going up however all in all it's kind of a little bit more than mediocre so 77 percent and when taking a look at the book value per share we can see that this company should now be worth 27 dollars and 35 cents and when taking a look at the tangible book value, this should be worth $8.71. And of course, if you remember, the current share price, guys, is $4.42, which means that when it comes to evaluation on the book value perspective, this ratio is 0.16 for the book value and 0.51 for the tangible book value. In each scenario, this is showing that this company is undervalued. However, this does not mean that you go out and buy it. Please understand that, guys, when it comes to any company, you need to understand all the ins and outs of the company before putting your money into it because you can absolutely lose money especially in a company that's foreign like this one and well you would need to know a lot more about what the company does so for that reason guys i have all of these calculators in the description for free please use them even though this one doesn't involve any assumptions still highly encourage for everybody to use it and of course please read the company's earnings reports uh 10ks 8ks and so on and so on and so on don't, don't just buy it because a ratio is telling you that's undervalued for all we know you know it could be undervalued for several reasons and the fact that this is a penny stock it, i'm not a fan of it either so if you do like this content guys make sure to like subscribe comment it really does help here with the algorithm on youtube we really really do appreciate it that really is all we're asking for guys um you know just help us grow the channel like th that's why we give everything out for free so if you guys would like to help us again like subscribe comment and of course share and of course with a nine and a half percent yield putting in five thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars this nets you well let's face it almost 1300 shares which increases your annual dividends by five hundred and forty four dollars now again they do pay out annually so yeah you're only getting this one time thing in june but at the end of the day that's still a pretty big increase guys however nine and a half percent man that's that's kind of scary like i just because a company has a big yield doesn't mean that it can't afford it but it's a big red flag and again you should probably do a lot more research as to why it's that big and when it comes to the options chains we can see that because this is foreign we have no options chains here to look at so all in all thank you so much andrea for your recommendation again i don't know if you're still watching but if you are well you got the last pick for the wheel so yeah it is what it is now guys from this point on we are going to take a look at earning season and uh yeah by the time you guys see this video we'll probably have a live stream set up for around 6 30 to 7 p.m so we're going to cover what coca-cola microsoft we're going to cover a lot of these companies guys so just be on the lookout for that one and i guess we will see you all in just a few hours so peace out and we'll see you then <laughs>